Welcome to the vlog, guys. I hope you're having a great day. This vlog is kind of a combination of late September and early October, but there is some footage from either July or August of my garden, which I wanted to include because I forgot to include that in past vlogs. So here's a little hummingbird just hanging out near my Mexican sunflower, aka Tithonia plant. There's a little bumblebee on a zinnia, just hanging out, just chilling, just holding on. Um, one of my birdhouses with my passion vine growing on it. Some more zinnias, some dill, and more passion vine. I love passion vine. I think it's one of the best plants you can put in your garden. Alright, so here's a hawk. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we get a hawk every now and then. This is a younger hawk. It looks like he's marked. He has like some kind of tag around his, uh, his uh, leg. Um, which I found really interesting. I wonder, I wonder what that tag is from. I guess they're trying to keep track of that particular hawk. But basically what I've been working on is I took these very standard artworks that I've had for years. That they've been in my living room for, I don't even know, almost as long as we've lived in this house. And I decided I was going to gesso over them and paint my own artworks um, over them and just replace them because number one I as an artist don't believe in doing generic art anymore like as in buying generic art at like home goods or anything like that anymore I just don't really like that mindset anymore and so I'm just trying to go back and kind of undo what I did in a way by just covering this up with gesso. I'm going to sand it and then I'm going to paint over it my own scenes, my own artwork. There's Sammy. He's such a sweetheart. He is kind of standoffish most of the time to be honest, but when he is cuddly like this, it is the best. It's so cute. And then here's a little bit of footage from my garden. Um, just some some native plants. The pink back there is actually Joe Pie weed. I keep forgetting the name of this white plant. I think it's related to Joe Pie Weed, but don't quote me on that. I don't I always forget the name of it. It looks so similar though. And here's um, a really cool sunflower that I cut down. I cut the head of the flower off. And right here I'm just I'm pulling off the actual flowers because a sunflower is actually composed of a ton of small little flowers. And once the seeds are done, you can just kind of brush away those little tiny flowers and then you'll expose the seeds the sunflower seeds and so that's what I'm doing in this video and I kind of thought that the flowers looked funny like when you zoom in you know what they look like here's a little spider that was hanging out on the sunflower seeds thought it was super cute but I also didn't want to disturb him <laughs> so I just kind of let him walk around for a second before I kept going and see I found it easier if I like broke the entire, I don't know what you call it because technically it's not just one flower, but um, I broke the thing in half. Um, I found that easier to get the seeds out. Of course, holding the camera makes it really hard to get the seeds out. So this is not a very good example right here. It's way easier than this. It's just really hard to do it with one hand. It really is. Um, and then here's just me doing some chores. I have this little basket that I throw my masks in. Um, because I like to wash my masks, like, each time that they're used. So when I get home from the store or whatever, I just throw my mask in this basket. And Derek does the same. And then I just wash them when I'm getting low on clean masks. Like, when I only have, like, one or two left. Then I'll wash the whole stack that's in the basket all at one time. Less work. I use really, really hot water and I use laundry detergent and that's how I do it and then I rinse them off and I hang them up I do not put them in the dryer I don't put them in the washing machine um, I wash them by hand and then I hang them up okay so here is my bookshelf that's in my study I call it the study I, I feel like it could be called the study the library whatever the case may be I think you call I would call it the study though I just think it's a cute name but I'm just basically filling these cracks in um, when this all settled it cracked unfortunately so I'm just going to be using some caulk on this um, I have a lot of really fun plans for this room uh, the study is is 
very little work has been done on this room. Um, we created this built-in that you're seeing me film right now. And other than that, this little shelf built-in, we haven't done a lot in that room. I've taken down the drop ceiling tiles because they were atrocious. They had stains on them. They were ugly. They were horrible. But now I have the issue of what am I going to do with the ceiling in this room? So hopefully this coming winter, I will be working on that room a lot more since the garden will be put to sleep for the year. And... um by then, I can work on this room more, devote more time and attention to it. And I really need to come up with a solution for the ceiling because it's very tricky. There are wires everywhere. There's a fluorescent light that pops down. There's a vent that pops down. There's um, ductwork. There, The wires themselves are like stapled or whatever or nailed to the bottom of... The beams, which is a pain in the butt, uh, if I ever want to put a different ceiling up there. So it's going to be tricky. I've been looking into different ideas on Pinterest. I am thinking about asking someone at Lowe's what I should do. I don't know. I need ideas. So if you guys have any ideas on doing a new ceiling in a very tricky space where you can't just stick things to the beams because the wires are at the bottom of the beams, just let me know. Let me know what kind of experience you guys have. I feel like I'm going to have to build some sort of wooden frame in the ceiling and then like attach tiles, kind of like a drop ceiling, except just a better look, you know? And right here, I'm just working on my Patreon mini art prints. So every single month, I send my $10 patrons mini art prints um, in the mail. I send one, uh, I send one art print per month to each... $10 patron and international. I think I have it set up to where I ask for two extra dollars for international just to help with shipping internationally. Um, and so that's how I have my Patreon set up. So go check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash Macy Lou. Here's Sammy again being really cute in my husband's office. My husband's office is upstairs, by the way. It gets pretty warm. Um, so that's probably why the cats like to hang out in there. And then I was working some more on my painting called How I Want to Go. Um, I actually have someone that's probably going to be buying this soon. I have to let this painting dry for about a month. I think I just I have just under a month left to go. Um, I have to let it dry and cure before I can varnish it. But I have a buyer for this. Um, it's just... I don't like to I don't like to assume that it's really gonna happen until it happens. So if anything changes, I will put this up in my shop and I'll let you guys know. Um, unless of course I get another like if if this cell falls through and someone else buys it, I mean of, of course then I won't put it on my website. But you know, here's a beautiful butterfly that was in my garden on my Russian sage plants. Um, and I really liked getting footage of this. It was so fun. Here's some footage of my garden. It's kind of a mess right now, but it, I don't like, I'm not, like, I'm a perfectionist in some ways, in small ways, but I'm not, like, a full-on perfectionist, um, in the garden at all. Uh, I'm way too lazy for that. I like to, and I have way too much Bermuda grass to be a perfectionist. If you guys know anything about Bermuda grass, you know that Bermuda grass makes everything look messy and just insane, so... Um, here's some footage of Luna. She's, she's so cute. She's so sweet. She's very, very lovey-dovey. Like, she loves attention. She loves being held. She loves being petted. She loves being kissed. She is so sweet. She always wants attention. <laughs> and she, like, really flicks her tail a lot in this video. It's so cute. So, I just wanted to share something I did with you guys. Um... I harvested some of my passion fruit from my passion vine, which, if you guys don't know, passion vine, uh, a specific kind of passion vine, I think it's called purple passion vine, um, it, is, it is native in my area. I'm in East Tennessee, so I have these, uh, I have these vines growing in my garden. Um, I actually, they, they didn't just grow on their own, though. I actually bought seeds, and I bought the plants, and... It produces this fruit that you see me uh, messing with right here. Now, 
It's very tricky for this species of passion vine uh, to tell when they're ripe because I've had ones that were really good and really delicious and really ripe and had the dark seeds like they're supposed to, but the outside was green. And then as you could see, the ones I just showed you, the outside's green, but they're not fully ripe. You can tell by the seeds, the seeds are not dark enough. So I decided instead of trying to eat them just as is, because they weren't that good um, alone, you know, I decided to make a smoothie. Uh, it started out as a smoothie, but it, it kind of ends up being more like a juice. So I, since they're very sour when they're not ripe, I added one popsicle. I know, too much sugar, but like just, just go with it. I added one popsicle, and then I added some, I think it's grape, grape raspberry juice. Honestly, you don't have to add this much to this. You could probably do without the popsicle, or you could maybe just do half of the juice. Um, I overdid it on the sugar, to be honest. It was a little, just a tad bit too sweet. It was pretty good, though. It was delicious, but just a tiny bit too sweet. It, too much sugar. Sugar overload. Because um, I also added some blueberries to it as well, which... It was just a few, um, but it mostly, that's mostly why it has the color that it has at the end, which is this very pretty pinkish purple color. Um, and the reason that I say I ended up doing a juice rather than a smoothie, because the passion vine seeds, the passion fruit seeds are very hard, which is fine. You can chew them, you can eat them or whatever, but I noticed last time I had a smoothie and I kept the seeds in it. Uh, the seeds were just a little annoying. Uh, they're just, just big enough that you feel like they get stuck in your throat when you're swallowing it. It's not pleasant. So we strained them out of it instead this time. And it just became a very liquidy juice instead of a smoothie. But it was, it was really delicious. Again, it's a little too much, a little too sweet. So skip some of the juice. Skip some of the popsicle maybe. Um, just basically don't put too much sweet in there. But it was pretty good. Okay, so this is footage of an aster, a couple of different aster plants I have um, on my side garden. Um, and as you can see, this is the other aster plant. It has smaller flowers on it, but the bees go wild for these asters. These asters are native plants actually to my area here in East Tennessee. They're in my side garden uh, surrounding my hydrangea bed, and I'm I don't even think I show my hydrangea in this footage because my hydrangea looks very, very, very sad and sick. It has new growth, which is promising, but um, it's very, very bare and sad looking, so <laughs> I didn't want to show it. But yeah, most of my, I guess, past week or two has been me gessoing these big panels for my living room and gessoing on the left there, you can see a piece of wood that I gessoed. There in the middle is a piece of wood that I gessoed. Um, all three of these are going to become paintings eventually. I have to sand them after I get all the gesso on. And I'm just so excited to see what I create with those. This is a recent commission. It's pretty much done. I just have to add a little bit more varnish on the sides. But once that's done, it will be ready to go off to its owner. And I'm very excited about that. And then I just wanted to do a quick little pan of the studio so you guys can get an idea of what the studio looks like right now as of October, like early October 2020, because as I'm recording this voiceover, it's just October 9th. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye!